Hey, Get Inspired, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Life Inspired. This is a program that talks about how and why people are following Christ. And we are so grateful that you guys would tune in. If you could like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's going to help more people get exposed to the stories of how God's making just turning points in lots of people's lives and helping them walk inspired lives. So thanks for that. You can always tune into the show on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, or at lifeinspiredshow.com. And so those are places you can share from as well if you're trying to share the story. So our guest today is my dear friend, Ryan Krieger. Hi, Ryan. Everybody say hello to Ryan and social distancing. <laughs> Great to be with you, Diane. Absolutely. So for those of you that are viewing, um, we pre-record these. And so th it may be that we're all out in the open by the time we get to watch Ryan's live on YouTube. But the, um, the time that we're recording it, we are still required to do social distancing. So we've got Ryan on Zoom. So you'll see me look off camera towards his face on the computer over here a little bit. Um, but just like always, we're going to ask Ryan three questions. Life was going along and, you know, just God was doing whatever God was doing. And something happened in Ryan's life to kind of turn his feet to a new inspired walk. So we're going to ask what was life like before that dot, dot, dot turning point? What was the and then God moment and what's the inspired life look like so tell us a little backstory Ryan what was your life like before this and I know you probably had several turning points most people do but the one that you're going to share today tell us some backstory so the one that I'd like to share today really begins in my uh, in my teen years so I had grown up a uh, Christian grown up a cradle Catholic and had gone to church every Sunday that was that was what you did but in a lot of ways, it was not really an internalized experience of God. It was, it was more of a, we go to church because we go to church, not we go to church because there's a relationship there or there's a, there's a story, a bigger story that I was a part of. So it really began as, uh, I would say, probably about 14, 15, 16, looking at what was happening around me, seeing friends who had also grown up in different uh, you know, Christian churches, who were kind of saying, well, you know, I, I don't really feel like I'm a part of anything here. I, it's, it's not something that's important to me. Um, and saying, gosh, you know, is this important to me? Does this matter? Is this something that's, that's a part of my life that should be a part of my life? Am I getting anything out of this? And more importantly, is it, does it have any meaning? So that's kind of where things began for right. me. Right. So then what was your dot, dot, dot? What, what got your attention that was God stepping in and saying, tap, 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 hello, Ryan Krieger, <laughs> here I am. So it was really a combination of, of head and heart. Uh, the, the head part began with a friend of mine who introduced me to two books. Uh, so the first book is one that I've heard a lot of people talk about and say was, was impactful for them, which was C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity just a fantastic book really? and a, a really great sort of primer by C.S. Lewis about how to understand your faith as more than just something that you do, more than just a set of practices or beliefs, but as a relationship. Um, so there was, that was the first book. And the second book he gave me is a, a beautiful book by Viktor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, for anybody out there who has never heard of it, wow. uh, Viktor Frankl was a... Um, he was a psychologist and a therapist who survived the, uh, the concentration camps of, of Nazi Germany and then later went on to have some unbelievable adventures, both as an individual and in the work that he did. But his story really comes down to the idea that uh, be below everything else, desire for a comfortable life, below our desire for security is an ultimate need for meaning and that you can have everything in the world. You can have, you know, you can have all the wealth, you can have all the power, you can have, you know, prestige and, and everything you could think of all the pleasures of the world. And if you don't have ultimate meaning, then you sort of stand on nothing. You're, you know, you're, you're standing on empty air. And I started looking at these two things and saying, okay, I do need real meaning in my life. Where do I find that? And I think God sort of took that moment and said, okay, if you're looking for a meeting, let's, let's talk, let's have a conversation about Here that. I and, <laughs> and I, I had a chance to go on a, a weekend retreat with about 
gosh, maybe 4,000 other young Christians and had a profound experience of God. I would say it was the first experience of God that I had that was not learning about God in a book, but was God as person saying, really saying two things, saying, here I am and I love you. And growing out of that, that basic profound experience, well, my first response to that was, oh my gosh, like, how do, what do I do with that? And then, right. The God of the universe wants to have a relationship with me. What? Right. It was, it was very, it was, it was jarring. It was exciting. It was terrifying. I, for the first time I understood why, you know, the, the, you know, in the Bible it talks about how the angels, the, you know, the messengers of God's goodness and power, why every single one of them, when they, when they meet somebody, uh, the first thing they say is be not afraid, <laughs> you know, cause it's easy to, right. to ex- have that experience and, and have no way to really process that. Um, and so growing out of that, I realized, okay, there, God is there. He loves me. And now it's up to me to decide how to respond to that. Wow. Okay. So to recap for our viewers, the two books that you were given were C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity Mm-hmm. And we'll get TJ um, to put those in our little, you know, he could put the titles on the screen. Uh, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis and Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. I want to add a third book because that Rick Warren book, Purpose Driven Life, has sold, you know, worldwide copies immensely. Same thing. It's people want purpose. People want meaning. So I feel like that one ought to be thrown in there as well. And so you were given these as a teenager, just a teenage friend gave them to you or what? Yeah. So a good friend of mine who is still a good friend to this day, he said, Hey, you should, you should check these out. These are really interesting. And he had read CS Lewis, especially uh, mere Christianity because his parents had read it and had told him about it. And it had been a big part of their conversion. I know it has had an impact on his life and he had been diving into all these questions. We had a number of friends, probably four or five of us together that were all sort of saying, okay, what, why are we here? What are we supposed to do with our lives? We can kind of just go along to get along. And there's always, you know, you can go from, from high school to college to, you know, career to work da 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 da, and not really address these ultimate questions, or we can really dive into this. And uh, he was one of the first right. to sort of take the plunge, and that led the rest of us sort of in the same direction, going, okay, let's let's think about this. And then once we, you know, and each of us had these experiences in different ways of God reaching out and saying, you know, you've knocked, I'm answering. And that led to uh, you know, a really profound change in the way that each of us lived. That's amazing. So then tell me this. So our third question is typically, what does inspired life look like? So how do you get inspiration every single day? How do you stay connected if it's a relationship? How do you have a relationship with someone you can't see? You can't call them on Zoom or FaceTime or the telephone. You're not going to email or text God. How do you have a relationship? What does that look like for Ryan Krieger? Because Ryan's way of connecting is going to be different than Diane's way of connecting or any of our viewers, but it might be similar to somebody. So what is it that you do? How do you stay connected? How do you get your inspiration? How do you have a relationship with an unseen God? That's an awesome question. So for me, it's, uh, it, it comes in two ways. So, um, as I to sort of complete the story or the story I would say never really completes. It's just a continuing growth of relationship over, you know, now over almost two decades since that time in my teens. And it's a, it's an experience of continuing to grow your relationship with God through everything that he puts in your path, whether it's work or life or family, but how do I, how do I start that each day? How do I, how do I build that connection? Um, the two have been an experience of, of faith in my church. So being a devout Catholic, um, being a part of mass and having a really solid group of men who I can pray with and who we experience our faith together. We talk about it, we get together, we pray for each other, we pray over each other, and we just let the Holy Spirit work on our lives together. Community has been incredibly important, both my broader community of my, my church, as well as a, a small group of men who I can really trust. And then daily cool. prayer in the morning, you know, um, I remember reading a, a, an interview with Mother Teresa and um, this interviewer was saying, 
hey, how do you uh, how do you start your day? And Mother Teresa said, oh, I, I start every day with an, an hour of prayer. And the, the interviewer was going, gosh, that, that seems like a lot of time for prayer. What do you talk about? What do you say to God for an hour? And she's like, well, nothing. She goes, and the interviewer says, okay, well, what, do, what does God say to you for an hour? <laughs> nothing. You know, just, you're just wow. there present with each other. The same as you would be with a good friend. You know, you don't have to talk all the time. You just have to be present. So uh, I try to start each day with a little bit of prayer. Um, <laughs> and if it's a particularly stressful day or if, you know, uh, I've got, I've got young kids and we've got one on the way. Uh, if it's a day that I know is going to be stressful, even before my feet hit the floor, I try to at least take that, that first few seconds and be like, all right, Lord, today's your day. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to need your help more than, <laughs> more than most on this day, but just, just help me out however you can. Right. Very cool. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that so much. So a couple of things came to mind and now they're, they probably jumped out of my head, but when you were talking about um, that connection and getting started, I was, I was thinking about how, you know, different ones, we, we just connect different ways. And, you know, so if your prayer life is, you know, listening, if your prayer life is talking either way, it's, it's your prayer life. It's different for you. So that's really cool. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. I so appreciate it. So um, if you guys are watching and you would like to connect with Ryan, Ryan is um, a very technological guy. He has several companies. He's come up with apps that he's sold and stuff like that. So if that's a kind of a person that you'd like to connect with and have questions, I know that Ryan would meet with you and um, do a Zoom call with you or have virtual coffee. Um, so feel free to connect with Ryan, right, Ryan? Absolutely. Reach out anytime. <laughs> Yeah, so feel free to do that. And if you know somebody else that needs to hear about, you know, these books and you think that this is a good recommendation for somebody, share this video. And if you know somebody that needs to come on this program and share their story about how and why they're following God, we would love to share that as well. So remember, our Facebook page is a place you can like, our YouTube channel you can subscribe, or you can also share it from the lifeinspiredshow.com link. So thank you guys for watching, Ryan. Thank you for being with us and stay safe. Great to be with All you, right, Diane. Bye, God everybody. bless.